In this video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to get the best FPS and the best visibility at the same time. First open Steam, right click Modern Warfare 2, go to Manage, then go to Browse Local Files. Once we're in here, we're gonna scroll down till we find COD EXE. We're gonna right click COD EXE and go to Properties. Once we're at this window, we're gonna go to the Compatibility tab. We're gonna make sure Disable Full Screen Optimizations is checked. Then we're gonna click Change High DPI Settings and make sure Override High DPI Scaling Behavior is also checked. Press OK then okay. Then we're gonna copy this bar up here. This may be different for everyone. We're gonna go to the search down here and we're gonna type graphics. Once this opens up, make sure that you have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling on. Then go down here and press browse. Here, we're gonna go up to this address bar and we're gonna press control V to paste the Call of Duty. That's gonna bring us here where we're gonna click cod.exe and hit add. That's gonna bring that and add that down here. We're gonna go to options and we're gonna put that on high performance and then press save. Then you can close this window, close this window and start the game. First, we're gonna to go to our graphics tab. Once we're in here, we're gonna start on display. Now for display, display mode, you're gonna to wanna to go with full screen exclusive for the best FPS and best performance. Me personally, I use full screen borderless, but that's because I do a lot of alt tabbing between multiple monitors. So I'm willing to sacrifice that FPS. Next, we'll go down to dynamic resolution. You wanna keep that off. Then head down to vSync gameplay and vSync menu, turn both of those off. Custom frame rate, leave that on unlimited. And the options below that, leave them as default. Next, we're gonna to go to the quality tab. Once we're in the quality tab, you're gonna to wanna to go to quality presets, go down and set that to custom. Keep your render resolution at 100. For upscaling and sharpening, this is revolving DLSS and other things things like that, we're gonna keep that off. And we're gonna go down here to anti-aliasing. Now, anti-aliasing is a little bit different in this game. They don't have simply off. So we're gonna go to SMA T2X. Then we're going to go to anti-aliasing quality and change that to low. Note that you can adjust these to find what sharpness or rounded edges work best for you. But if you want the most FPS, this is what you need to set it as. Go ahead and take your Vitter memory scale and crank it all the way up to the top. We're gonna set texture resolution to normal for the best visibility as well as FPS, a good balance between the two. We're gonna go to texture filter anisotropic and we're gonna set that to high as that's gonna give us the best visibility. Then we're gonna go to nearby level of detail and we're gonna go and turn that to low. We're gonna turn distant level of detail to low. We're gonna take clutter draw distance and put that to short. For particle quality, we're actually going to leave this on high. When you have particle quality set to low, it creates a lot of visibility issues, so we're gonna leave that on high. We're gonna to go to particle quality level and set that to very low. Bullet impact sprays, we're gonna keep that off. We're gonna take shader quality and put that to low. We're gonna take tessellization and we're gonna set that to near. Now, if you want the best FPS, you're gonna to wanna to set that to off. And if you want the best visibility, you're gonna to wanna to set that to all. But I find that near is a good balance between FPS and visibility. We're gonna set terrain memory to min, and you're going to turn off on-demand texture streaming as it has almost no visual impact, but does hit your FPS. Then volumetric quality, we're gonna take this and turn it low. We're gonna take deferred physics qualities and turn that off. We're gonna to go to water caustics and turn that off. We're gonna to go to shadow map resolution and leave that at normal. We're gonna to go to screen space shadows turn that off. We're gonna to go to spot shadow quality, turn that low. Turn cache spot shadows off, turn spot cache to low. For particle quality, we're actually gonna leave this at normal. Again, we need this for the best visibility as low makes it difficult to see through. Ambient off collision is gonna be off. Screen space reflection is gonna be on normal. This is gonna increase your indoor visibility with lighting and things of that nature. Static reflection quality, we're gonna turn that off. Weather grid volumes, we're gonna turn that off. Now this one, I don't know how much of a visibility impact this one has. I haven't had enough testing to be able to do that, but it does hit your FPS, so we're just gonna turn that off until we find out otherwise. NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, we're gonna put that to on. We're not gonna put it to boost unless you think that your CPU can handle it. It's not gonna increase your FPS, it's just for low latency, giving you better input delay. So I like to keep that on so it doesn't hit my CPU as much. Depth of field is off, world motion blur is off, Motion, weapon motion blur is off and film grain at zero. Then we're gonna head to the view tab. Now the view tab, this is really computer dependent. If you want the best between FPS as well as visibility, you might wanna set your FOV to 90. But if you have a computer or a card that can handle it, I would go bring that up to 110 so you have the best competitive visibility. ADS field of view, I strongly advise you keep this on affected. Weapon field of view default, vehicle field of view default. First person and third person camera, I'd leave those at 100%. Now, for those who have an NVIDIA card, we're gonna come back and talk about this DLSS setting. If you have DLSS, it may be worth to go ahead and turn that on for you as this may give you 
mixed results in your performance as well as visibility. It's gonna be something that you're gonna have to toy around with. Personally, I've gone with NVIDIA DLSS and gone with Balanced, and I've had a great mix between FPS as well as visibility, and this is what's done best for me. But not everybody has an NVIDIA card or an NVIDIA card that supports this. So if you don't, again, follow back to all the settings that I said before, but if you do have this setting, it is worth turning on DLSS, going to show more, putting on the preset of balanced quality performance, seeing what one works best for you. Visibility wise and performance wise, balance is made for that. And then you can go ahead and increase your sharpness if things look a little too blurry or whatnot like that for you. That's gonna be all for this video today, you guys. If you guys wanna keep up with more Call of Duty content, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.